and here files from double click to convert one zoom do not convert this one so okay these are the constraints that are available in sql server this is common in almost all the rwms okay now uh, we just so far we discussed about how to create a table and how to modify a table and how to drop a column delete a column everything you know we can do it with uh, that one and then uh, the constraints how to create a constraints for a table right you can uh, these are the constraints that are available what is primary key foreign key and uh, all of you are aware and then null constraint okay not null constraint and then unique constraint check constraint default uh, constraint these are the constraints i just quickly show you in my this thing okay here what i do is i just um, say my employee table here where is my employee table I think I created somewhere else this one employee table. Let me just go and select it here. Yeah, the DBO employee, I, it has gone into my demo database, correct? Only? Yeah, correct. Uh, fine, fine, fine. Fine, okay. Here. Um, okay, we have something like SQ um, SP underscore help. You want you can note it down. So this is for uh, employee table. I just want to see. What are the columns that are available? Okay, in, in, in Oracle, another thing, right? You're going to describe, describe table name. It gives you the column name, data type, everything. So, right, manual way of checking it. Okay, you can select it here and you can see it. Or the manual way of doing it, you can see it here. So, we can add constraint, primary key constraint. What is the primary key? If you want to uniquely identify a record, okay, you need to have a primary key column, okay? The primary key column is helpful to store the values uniquely in your dimension table. You remember dimension table or lookup table, you need to have a primary key column in order to uniquely identify a record. Okay, so here uh, the employee ID, employee name, and uh, data bar, three columns, we created it manually. So here what uh, we can do is, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to use alter table, the employee table name. Employee is the table name. And then what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to say add constraint, add the constraint uh, and here the constraint name is emp pk something like that okay here um, i'm going to say the primary key primary key is uh, emp id when i don't remember this syntax okay the primary key concern null level column in table employee. Okay, let us see what uh, null values are there here. Select star from EMP. But it says uh, null values are there here. Okay. Again, I just uh, go back here and I'll just check the null uh, thing here. Sorry, guys. Um, I just forgot these things. Or else I do one thing. I just drop the table. Drop employee table, employee table. But don't ever do this just because I'm doing it. Okay, in the real time, you're not supposed to do it like this. And... Um,
Okay, in this case, we'll take this one. Okay, this same table, product table, customer ID, demo, sales fact table. Okay, I just take this instead of spending time there. Look here. So this is my table name. If I want to see what are the columns that are available, just click uh, the plus sign next to the columns. You can see all the columns that belongs to the table. And um, yeah, if you want to see the keys, what are the keys, right? The primary key constraint, any constraint, if you have defined it, you can see it here. The constraints, how do I define a constraint? Okay, so what we will do is um, to start with the uh, alter table, uh, sales um, fact. Let me just quickly check the syntax. Even SQL, I worked a long back because we are working predominantly on the no SQL and other things. Anyhow, so this is the one learn.microsoft.com. I just quickly go here and check. Alter table, add constraint. primary key and then column. Okay, you need to specify the column here. They did not give anything, any example here. This is one biggest problem here. Better we can search it in Google itself. Sorry, this uh, primary key, I should have prepared it. Everything I say, I kept script somewhere else. Alter table, uh, pri add constraint. Primary key in SQL Server. Table, table name, add constraints, correct only, right? Okay, inside the parenthesis, it is alter table, table name, add constraint. I need to specify like this because it varies from one RDBMS to order. We work with different RDBMS. Table, add constraint. Or I just say, um, I'm going to say, let's say, you know, order number. Order number is my um, sorry. This is a constraint name can be anything. Something order pk something like that. Okay, primary key and then uh, the primary key inside the parenthesis you need to specify it. Here I just say order number. Do not create constraint name, sales fact. The primary constraint nullable column cannot define the nullable column here. You understood what he's saying? Okay, you need to insert the data. What I'll do is primary key should not have any blank, you know, blank values in it. That is the reason why I think he's doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert some record inset. Sales fact, we have data, right? Sales, uh, select store from sales fact. Yes, we have the data in here. And let me see, uh, okay, we did not create any keys here. And here it shows uh, alter table name, order PK. So this syntax works with the other RDBMS, okay? Null level cannot define primary key column. Okay, we have nullable column in table. So do I have any null values in this table column? Let me do one thing. Mm, yeah, these columns, right? These columns, we don't need it. Delete these columns. These columns have some null values. Maybe because of that, it is giving this one. Hmm. This is some other problem. Cannot define primary key. This is very specific. This is one pain with uh, the SQL server. It is not like other RDMS. Cannot define primary key. Come on. 
Stack overflow is very much helpful here. Uh, where you cannot define. That you can supply. Uh, okay, alter table table name. Alter column column. Int not null. Okay, okay, okay. This column name is correct one. It's not the problem with the SQL server. It is the problem with me only. It's the basic thing. I know you need to make sure that the column which you are going to create it, it does not. Uh, you know, you should have mentioned, you should have mentioned the not null constraint. Here in this case, the sales fact, alter column, column name is uh, order number. And here uh, the int not null. Okay. And here home. And I just say press FI. Good. Superb. Now we are able to create the prime, the not null column. And the next step is we need to use the primary key. I just copy paste this one here and then here what i do is i just um, click on execute create unique because the duplicate yeah in the key in this case but this is the actual procedure in this case order number we have duplicate right since it is not allowing me to create uh, the order number what i do is instead you will create a composite primary key this is the actual syntax. This is how you need to create it. The reason is order number column has duplicates. The same order number is repeating because it's a transaction table, right? Order uh, date. So you can create a composite primary key. You can, you can create a primary key based on more than one column. Can I define primary key? Okay. So the uh, order date column should also be not null. Still duplicate keys are there. Uh, the same day, um, you know, the same order number can repeat more than one time because of uh, the this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another column. Do we have product ID? Yes, product ID. Product ID cannot be product ID. Mm. <laughs> So you need to, they expect you to create the script like this. The rest, they will take care, the DBS. Product ID is what data type? N uh, var pair of uh, 255, not null. Okay, and the next step is, Papada, you got created. So here we have created the composite primary key. One way it is good, right? Instead of just showing, uh, creating a primary key on a single column. So here order number, order date, product ID. Okay, in the single uh, order, you can see the um, order, uh, you know, say the, the product will repeat only one time, right? You will not see the duplicate of the product in a single order. And the order date, right? Order date and order number can duplicate because in a single order, you would have uh, Ray, you, you would have purchased um, or you would have ordered more than one product, right? So in that case, these two will, will have duplicate values. But when the combination of these three, you will not have duplicate. But before you create the primary key, make sure that for, you know, for each columns, you, know, you have not null constraint, you defined it. So now you understood what, how to uh, create a primary key and how what is a not null constraint. Because uh, the primary key column should not have any blank values in it. This is one of the rule you need to remember it. Primary key column should not have blank values in it. And then next one is the um, check constraint. Alter column here, uh, the column name is, uh, let's say, you know, the quantity. We can say quantity int not null. Um, here, alter column, uh, alter table, table name, add constraint. We can specify some constraint name also. Quantity, um, check constraint. This is called check constraint. 
check inside the parenthesis i'm going to specify the conditions okay the conditions so what condition we can specify for example the quantity is ideally i should have copied this one the constraint name is quantity is greater than zero it should not allow anything less than zero and then here i give some chk check constraint some meaningful name okay check constraint on quantity q divide here what we are saying is when we enter any data when you insert any data into your sales fact right uh, before uh, even the data get loaded inside this table or you know while the data are being loaded into this table it will check this condition in case the records that have quantity is less than zero it will reject it the table level itself we are establishing a control okay we are said defining the rule make sure that when you load any data or insert any data into sales fact table the quantity column value should not be less than zero so now we understood what is not null constraint and what is primary key constraint what is the check constraint okay these are the things you need to remember it and the okay what are the data definition language create the table so now you learned about create table alter table drop table and we have something called truncate let's see if the truncate works here and i'm going to truncate i'm not going to truncate this one truncate um table dim uh, customer Look here, the data from this table got <clears throat> deleted permanently. Okay, delete from. So, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, truncate table is also a very dangerous command. Truncate table, drop table, don't ever try it out. If you want to delete the data permanently from your table, either you can, uh, you can use truncate table, but truncate table will remove the records permanently from the table, but table structure will be there. Drop table, it will drop the table structure as well as the data. Got it? The difference between drop table and uh, truncate table is that is the one. As the name suggests, it will simply drop the entire table. Truncate table, it will not drop the table, but uh, only the data will get deleted. You cannot restore the data once you delete it. And now uh, we have uh, the insert statement, how to insert the data into a table. For this, uh, I'm going to use a simple table, dim customer. Here, what I'm going to do is I just um, script table as, look here, if you want to use, if you want to perform any CRUD operations, right? If you want to insert, update, delete, read is select, okay? If you want to perform any um, CRUD operations, what you do is you can rely on this one, script table as, go, go here, and you want to insert some data in addition to the existing table. So in the dim customer, already we have some data in it. Data is not there. Okay, we'll take uh, this one. The category, it is there. What I do is in the dim category, I just right click on it, go to script table as, and then insert into, generate the insert script also, right? So here it generates the, here you need to specify the value here. Okay, the values are something like cat ID, so what is that here um c005 and i'm going to say c006 something like that we don't have to specify the data type and all but it is for our reference it is giving it okay c06 and category id and category name is uh let's say you have something called toiletry right or cosmetics
one row affected. So now we are looking at the CRUD operations. Create table, so far we have seen it. C is, uh, C stands for uh, create table. And read a table, select statement, how to select the data. And uh, okay, insert is something like uh, that is falling under the data manipulation language. Sorry, the, the DML consists of insert, update, delete. These are called as a CRUD, okay? Delete, uh, I'm going to use it now. Sorry, before delete, I'm going to use update, okay? Because once we delete again, we need to restore it. So I, how do I update it? This is a very important thing where the category name, category, category is equivalent to, let's say I'm saying that um, cosmetics, The real-time scenario, when it comes to data warehouse, we never use update statement at all. But um, there are situations in the staging area, you will have to do some kind of updation. Here, very, very important. See what happened in one of the projects, the project leader, right? He just uh, uh, specify update category, that's all. He did not specify uh, the, sorry, the, your, the proper condition here. and. Um, sorry, category equal to constraint, and then here let me just check this in. Okay, let me do one thing update. Um, cat ID. C006, that is what we used it, right? Cat ID C006, you need to specify C006. For this condition, for this category, you modify the category name. That is what, that is how we need to specify it here. Uh, in case index near where, okay, where, uh, okay, where. The syntax problem. See, syntax mistakes, it's not a big uh, mistake. Update uh, in SQL server because when RDBMS to another RDBMS, it will vary. Mm, update query. Okay, let me check the syntax here. Even the basic syntax also. Yes, yeah, set command, English set command. Update table, table name, set, um, yeah, set. Sorry, here you need to specify set here. Even I need to refresh it. Probably I will refresh it tomorrow. Okay, the thing is where condition. Yeah, where should go here? The cat ID is equivalent to C006. This is update statement. Look here, cosmetics got uh, renamed by, renamed with uh, the cosmetics department, okay? So here the syntax for this one update and then the table name, which table you want to update it and what value you need to, you know, uh, modify it using set, followed by set, you need to specify the column name and the new value and followed by that, you need to specify this where condition. Yeah, this is what I was about to tell. So this where condition, it did not specify. We were using 25 million records. It simply went to live. Okay, what happened? Each jobs are depending on one another. Since it did not specify that this, uh, this was hanging for, uh, hanging like anything and the rest of the jobs got failed. The where condition in the update statement, you need to specify, but in the data warehouse, we never use update statement at all. But please remember this. But in the staging area, you might be using it. Even in the case of staging area, they'll be using uh, more uh, number of data in it in the tables. So insert, update, uh, the next one is the delete statement. The delete from this table. Delete star from, this is what Oracle thing or MySQL because I worked uh, predominantly with uh, one row effect. It says one row affected. Okay, let me just check. If I, yeah, still it is there and uh, update the delete query here. 
delete from table sorry delete from table that's it even in this case you need to specify the where class if you don't specify where class it will remove entire record from this so here we have duplicate records right uh, one record has gone i think where the category is equivalent to is equivalent to cosmetics cool it's working fine now i just what i will do is i'll save the script whatever i did it right i just um maybe this one we did it. the other thing is uh, yeah it, i i stored it somewhere it'll it'll get stored somewhere okay i just restore that i'll put it everything in a single file you can watch my video and uh, start practice this one cred operation so here uh, the these are called your dml operation the following things whatever we are doing it right the below one dml so data manipulation because we are modifying the data we are modifying the table inserting the data new data we are modifying the existing data and then existing data we are going to delete it make sure that when the delete and update you are using where class all the time based on some condition only you need to delete it got it so now you understood the basic very basic stuff and the next one is so uh, let me just check what are the things are there in the this is what we discussed dml language select insert update delete and cred operation and then uh, cred is mix of this one create uh, insert update delete and alter drop how to you know drop a table how to alter the table to modify the primary key constraint or to modify the column width everything we have used it okay and the grant revoke this is admin i'm not going to touch upon it the database admin so they are the one granting the privilege to your table okay not all the users will be allowed to access all the tables uh, they will be given they will be you know given some permission like using grant command grant select only on specific table you should be able to read only that one this is what the select statement uh, any of uh, we will take a look at the group by now it's time now for us not group by you know, all columns converting data type and the next one is yeah the, these are the thing basic thing is null okay so now uh, you have understood uh, the the different constraints the null constraint check constraint not null constraint and then primary key constraint you understood next one is we will take a look at uh, the how to work with the nulls okay the null fun is null there is something on is null function supposing you want to check uh, you know any null values are in the table or in the column name for example select um, category column from dim category sorry let me do one thing it takes a lot of time in this case what he says is null okay and he is null value okay so what we can do is some um, select okay we can do it this way also there is some kind of returns value of the column or uh, you know variable is null supposing sometimes what will happen is if any specific column in your table has missing value in it you can put some default value for example in this case select uh, is null this is very much helpful guys because uh, in the real time scenario this is how we'll be using it is null function is very much helpful is null for example in the category column if the category column has any null value in it put something like um, 999 something like that. they'll give you some value like this okay and uh, is null category from dim category table so here uh, we don't see any null values hence uh, the category all the category values are displayed supposing you have any null value for example here let's say you have blank value in it it will be replaced by 99 so that what we do is later point them we load the data and then we check while loading the data in uh, sorry or not loading the data uh, when we select the data right uh, if you find anything missing values replace that by 99 so that later point in time you can query uh, this table using where condition where category equal to 99 so that you are selecting only the 
subset of the data you have 25 million records you just you don't want to see or you know select all the you know the null values simply what you're doing is null you're putting is null and then even update also we use it update update table name set um the category column is null triple nine right is null this one okay and then um this one will use it all right so the update table name set is null of this one so what will happen is uh, in this case it will go and put uh, the four nines wherever the blank values are there okay so now the question is uh, what is the advantage of putting uh, the 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 four nines in the blank values your table has um, well, 10 million records are there you just uh, you are very particular about seeing the records that have 999 the next question is sir i can use is null itself why triple nine this is some uh, rules that they follow it in the companies okay 999 the null if okay the null if is the same thing if null if if the column has null value put some value like this okay is null or null if and we have something called collage returns the value of the first non-null column okay this is the one will return the first non-null supposing you have three column three values for example select um you have something called null null first two values are null you just think that way okay and here you have 100 and 10 20 um what i'm going to do is i'm going to use colas here call co a l e s c not dual sorry this is oracle <laughs> So what do you see with this what you can understand it will return the first non-null value the first one is the null value non null value the first non-null value in this is 10 it returns this one that is what uh, colas is doing it and working with nulls in the say that is so so far we discussed about what is the transact sql and uh, our relational databases you know already we discussed as part of power bi right so relation is nothing but uh, in the, in the last session we discussed that we create the relationship between the tables if you want to query the data from more than one table you need to create the relationship between the tables and so we call it a relational database and schemas and object names schemas are something like your database name object names are like your columns and uh, constraints you know these are the object types and sql statement types we discussed we discussed about three uh, different types of sql statements one is the data definition language the other one is the dml and the the other one is the dql so what is data definition language can can someone type it in the chat window quickly let me see how many of you can remember it what is data definition language as part of this we are defining the table defining the table is create table modify table drop table that is what your ddl statement right so that is what a data definition language data manipulation language what is the example for data manipulation language can someone type it in the chat window dml insert update delete select these are called your dml right so these are dml statement and the next one anyhow i will share this powerpoint also it is self-explanatory you can also understand the basic things right you can understand it quickly with this one and the next one is oh my god i thought of completing many things and joins joins what we will do is um yeah it will take some time we will continue joins what I will do is in the meanwhile, let me check all my previous script so that we can utilize this time more effectively. Uh, this is the assignments. I will give you the data set, everything table tomorrow. Okay, you can start, uh, you know, uh, for this, I don't think so. You need um, the join knowledge. Yeah, this assignment I will send you now. What it is, if possible, you can try it out uh, before tomorrow's session. And then we will discuss this in tomorrow's session the assignment solution and then we will proceed with what exactly the subquery and what is the correlated subquery subquery is also called a non-correlated it is also called as a you know the, there is something else called uh, the non-correlated correlated non-correlated subquery and also we'll discuss about the difference between these two in tomorrow's session exists union union all intersect it's all pretty simple very easy to understand okay i will explain only thing is the syntax because we people are working in rdbms mysql sorry the mysql oracle teradata the syntax is slightly different that's why we get confused okay 
anyhow the learn.microsoft.com in case any no no not see, when in the interview they ask you the syntax they will not expect you to be very good at syntax they expect you to the logic okay what is the what are the constraints are there what is primary key primary key why we need to define it we need to define primary key on the, you know in order to make sure that we are not having the duplicate of the records to prevent the duplicate records get into your table we are using primary key and then uh, the um, check constraint the same thing i already discussed check constraint uh, the null not null if you want to create a if you want to define a primary key on a specific column that column should uh, be defined as a not null constraint and it should not have any null value in that case we use not null constraint and there are some cases right uh, the columns for example in the, in the automobile insurance the data set uh, the age of vehicle column should not have blank value in it the age of the vehicle column is not a primary key column but um, it is mandatory based on the age of the vehicle they will determine the premium amount right so so th those kind of situation will be using not null constraint it is mandatory not null constraint something like mandatory this column you have to have the data in it otherwise i will not insert the data in that kind of situation we use not null constraint fine it is already 11 o'clock i have a lot of other things to complete from my side uh, office side so you have any questions so far sorry guys the script is not there anyhow i'll keep it everything ready so that it will be more organized uh, in tomorrow's session tomorrow's session will uh, try to uh, you know um, cover as much as possible in half an hour time okay I, i'll do some time management perfect tomorrow and what i will do is uh, i will start the interview questions power bi interview questions okay whatever i can cover it i can cover it and then i'll point you to our website wherein you can find all the interview questions you can just go through on it and what uh, we will do is uh, next week also we will have one session and um, we will discuss in detail about the interview preparation see i will tell you very clearly technically you should be strong syntax is not required so at least you should be knowing uh, you know the technically like uh, if they ask you what is virtual relationship what is disconnect table they'll ask you and with scenario they'll explain believe me or not say i carry 17 years of experience even uh, see i attended walmart now recently the interview six rounds interviews where the, the, the first two rounds were technical they're asking uh, left and right in python this is very much important please please remember uh you know you are practicing well you know uh, and uh, with scenario practicing is not only practicing in in, uh, in power bi desktop and sql and you should be knowing how to articulate how to explain with example okay they expect from any level because if something goes wrong the gra i cannot depend on uh, the ground level people all the time as a uh, you know the lead uh, or principal data scientist i need to get into the ground level and i need to fix it so for that obviously i need to be very strong in technically the same thing is expected from every level the interview that is what they are expecting that is the value they are expecting from you apart from this they will expect you uh, how good are you with domain knowledge okay if you are into finance you should be knowing finance at least reasonably good and if you know healthcare you should be knowing the healthcare very well and retail obviously right A retail supply chain management you should be knowing it very well that will add an additional value but apart from this if you are good with power bi and sql whatever i am going to cover it that is enough we will see to that if i cannot cover it in 30 minutes let it be there we'll spend some more time tomorrow i will you know we'll spend it uh, next week uh, what we'll do is tuesday tuesday i'm going to start a new by monday we'll have it okay monday we will continue with uh, the power bi interview questions interview preparation okay and prepare very well don't feel shy don't no ego nothing okay you are all are equal you paid money to me you have every right to ask me questions you can ask me end of the day i want you all to be get settled well with the new companies and in your life that is what my intention okay uh, work work right start practice it um, okay it is not a rocket science you don't have to quit your job market is very bad right so even today you would have seen the status okay i'm going to end the session now since you are not having any questions i'm going to end the session we'll share the video a little later tonight and uh, the assignments you give it a try whatever in the slide is there right i'll share all these slides also you can use it okay to practice it's all from microsoft website
Okay, good night. See you all tomorrow.